Hi! Can you hear that funky disco music playing in the background? It's free, it's unobtrusive and it's AI generated. But let's stop that for now. AI can generate images for you, AI can generate music for you and AI can write code for you. As a software developer, of course, writing code via AI is something very interesting for me. I mean, will it help me? Will it make me unemployed? We will find out today. I'm working with C-Sharp for quite some years now, so I decided to take the hard way. I wanted a running application, so I wanted to compile the code. I wanted to create a database and start it. And I also needed some help by calling the web endpoints using ChatGPT. So for all who don't want to watch the 15 minute coding session and just want a quick conclusion, I have it for you. Three main points. First, ChatGPT creates code better than anything I ever seen before. I will use ChatGPT for my daily work in the future. Second, ChatGPT is unpredictable. It forgets lines of code and sometimes even makes mistakes. And third, I predict that ChatGPT will not replace any software developer job in the future. Why? Because ChatGPT can generate code, but it can create an application. You need to be an experienced application developer to put together all the parts which ChatGPT suggests to you. So now let's start and get into all the dirty details. So I open my browser. Go to chat.openai.com and I type in create a C sharp CRUD service, where CRUD stands for create, update, and delete. So, this is the most simple example. Please notice that every time I create the service, it looks a bit different. So, ChatGPT will never create the same service twice. As you can see, ChatGPT just stopped in the middle, so I have to click on continue generating. So let's have a look at what ChatGPT created for us. It created basically four different classes. First of all, of course, we have the entity. It just took a product. We will change that later with ID, name and price. Then we have a class which is holding the connection to the database. Here we can configure it and it's using SQL Server, which is kind of standard for C Sharp. We also have a service which implements all the CRUD operations. So we get all products, we get a product by ID, we add, update and delete a product. And we also have an API, which means that our services can be accessed via HTTP connection using Microsoft ASP.NET Core. And at least we have a configuration class. This one is just starting our ASP.NET application. So what are we going to do now? First of all, I think we need another entity. So what I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT to create, create another type of entity for me. So I type use beverage instead of product and add a property called size as an integer. So now ChatGPT will completely recreate everything and automatically use beverage. And the service will be called beverage service and we'll get all beverages. This is really cool. This saves a lot of work. So can we get this code running? Yes, we can, but unfortunately it's manual work. So yeah, programmers, you will not get out of work. So what I do now is start Visual Studio Code and create a new folder. So I start Visual Studio Code, click on open folder, and now I create a new folder. I call this GPT demo and select it. I create a new file called beverage.cs. And I copy the code from ChatGPT into this file. That's really manual work. And I repeat this with every file which ChatGPT created for me. And at the end it looks like that. Now all the four files have been added to our project. Next, Visual Studio Code asks me to install the C-Sharp extensions. 
After installing the extension, I click on Get the SDK to download the .NET SDK. Now I download .NET SDK x64. Now I install it by following the instructions. We are ready. The problem with our application is now that it doesn't have any startup function. So what I need is to create a so-called main function. So I go to ChatGPT again and ask him to make the CRUD application storable. And he creates me a kind of code which is there to start the application. I take this code and copy it into my application. We still cannot start our application because we still need a CS project file. But I can ask ChatGPT to create a project file for our CRUD application. And what we get as a result is this wonderful project file, which I can save as a CS project file, which I do right now. Now we can try to build this application. I go to terminal, new terminal, and type in .NET build. And let's see if it really builds. As you can see, it does not build because it doesn't know the data context. So have a let's have a look at that one. So after some research, I find the solution. It's quite simple. When I changed product to beverage, ChatGPT simply forgot to recreate the data context. So I manually ask ChatGPT to create this data context again. Create the data context for our CRUD service. Okay, now I can copy the code and paste it into my application. After creating the data context, I type in .NET build and you can see the build is successful. But there are some warnings. The problem is that ChatGPT generated our C as project for an old version, .NET 5 and I want .NET 7. So I asked ChatGPT to change that. Create the C as project file for .NET 7. Okay, now I copy the code and I paste it to a CS project file, hoping that it works at that time. And let's start to build it again. So now we stumble into the next problem. We can see that ChatGPT is using preview versions, which we don't need. Let's try to fix that one. Don't use preview versions in the CS project file. And you won't believe it, but really, he fixed it. So now let's try to build it again. You can see some warnings about non-nullable properties, but we will leave that for now, because even in human-created projects, this is a typical mistake for .NET applications. So let's try to start this one now. .NET run. Now it's starting in an ASP.NET application. I want to test my application now, and so I ask ChatGPT to generate a curl command which creates a beverage on localhost port 5000. And as you can see, it magically creates a curl command. As it turns out, this curl command doesn't give any error, so I ask him to make the curl verbose. So now I get a verbose command, and I can copy this one and just put it into Visual Studio Code. So now I paste this command. And as you can see, I get an internal server error. Something has gone wrong. So let's go to the logging. I click on .NET now. And as you can see, I get a lot of errors. I found the error. .NET is unable to activate the data context. The problem is only solvable by a human. It is simply wrong generated code. The data context has to be added by using add db context. And this is what ChatGPT got wrong. And now I can restart the service and try it again. After restarting, I get another error. DB context on configuring is missing. ChatGPT simply forgot this code when he was regenerating it. So let's take it from the first attempt. So here you can see that this method was generated, but when I changed products to beverages, it simply forgot this method. So I copy and paste it into my code and restart it. When we have a look at the connection code, we can be sure that this connection string will not be working. So let's use ChatGPT to, to generate a proper SQL server connection string. So now I ask ChatGPT to generate an SQL server connection string to localhost with database beverages and username disco and password test. 
And as you can see, it created an SQL connection string. I copy this one and put it into my code. The last thing we have to do now is to start the SQL server. I also ask ChatGPT to generate a Docker command which starts an SQL server database with password test. And what it did, it started, it generated a docker run command which I can just copy and paste into the console. In order to get SQL Server running via Docker, we need to install the Docker desktop for Windows, which I'm doing right now here. So after installing Docker for Windows, I can run the Docker command and you can see it's successful. So now let's have a look if the SQL Server has been started correctly. And as you can see in the log, you see an error I made a password which is not secure. Yeah, the password test might not be secure. And this is something which ChatGPT of course doesn't know. So I changed my password to something more secure. So now let's start again. Now I delete the container and create it again. And as you can see, secret server is running now. Now let's start the application again. After retrying, we stumble on the next error. The certificate chain was issued by an authority that is not trusted. This is something which I solve by just looking at Stack Overflow and it tells me that I have to add the trust service certificate equals true to the connection string. Something which of course ChatGPT doesn't know. The next problem we stumble upon is that the login failed for user disco. It's quite clear because the user ID disco simply doesn't exist. Nobody created it on the SQL server. So we have to do that now. And guess what? We will also create this user using ChatGPT. So I ask ChatGPT, generate a PowerShell command in order to create the user disco on a SQL server. And what he does is create a PowerShell command, which I can just copy and now paste it into my terminal. So what I do now is to create a new PowerShell script, saying new file, create user.ps, and then I paste the code here. And now we'll change all the passwords as expected. So now I changed all the parameters in the PowerShell script, and now I want to run this PowerShell script. Unfortunately, I forgot how to run a PowerShell script, so I also ask ChatGPT. Run the PowerShell script create user dot ps. So you can see the solution now. I made the wrong file ending. It should have been ps1. So I will change that. I also installed the PowerShell scripts because Visual Studio suggested this. And now I can start the script. Now I stumble into the next problem because running PowerShell scripts is not allowed on the system. I have to fix this one. So my suggestion is again to ask ChatGPT, enable running PowerShell scripts on Windows system. And I really get a solution, which I will try out now. But now you see the next problem. I have to run this one as administrator. So I will also ask ChatGPT to make it run as an administrator. Run this script as an administrator. So what ChatGPT suggests is to right-click a Windows PowerShell and run it as an administrator. So this is what I'm going to do now. Okay, it worked. I can say yes. So let's try again to start our script. It worked. Now I get the next error. Invoke SQL command is not recognized. So let's have a look and ask ChatGPT what this invoke SQL command means. What is invoke minus SQL CMD? Here I get the answer. In order to run invoke SQL command, I need to have the SQL server PowerShell module installed. So I will just Google that. So now I get the hint that I have to execute this code in order to run the, to install the SQL Server module for PowerShell. This is what I will do right now. Again, I need administrative privileges, so let's do that one again. I needed to install a NuGet provider and also 
I allow untrusted repositories. And now I can try to run the script again. The error is that the certificate chain is issued by an authority that is not trusted. It's the same error as we just got. So I copy this one and paste it into our shell. And then I start it again. Unfortunately, this doesn't solve our problems. And when I have a look at the script, I see that the connection string is defined, but invoke SQL command simply doesn't use it. So the code which ChatGPT generated simply doesn't work. I need to fix that one manually. So after some time, I found out that the dollar signs were the problem in the password. I replaced them with uh, routes and now it works like a charm. Now I want to create a SQL code which also creates our database beverages. So I go to ChatGPT and type in create SQL code for database beverages. And that's all. I can copy the code, paste it into my script and run it again. The problem is that this doesn't work. You need two steps. First, you need to create a database and then you have to create a login. So I ask ChatGPT for a solution. I ask him, create a SQL Server database and user in a single command. So what he does now is he uses the master database, says go, creates a database, uses it and so on. So I will take exactly this script and adapt it to my needs. And after changing this one, my script works. Excellent. ChatGPT really helped me with that. So after fixing this one, we get the next error. It says invalid object name beverages. So let's have a look what it means. After some research, I found the problem. Of course, we need to create the database. For this, .NET provides some tools, which we now copy and paste into our console to run it. When I execute the scripts, I get the next problem. The user cannot create the tables, so he needs privileges. This is something which I will ask ChatGPT for help. So I ask, give all permissions for a database to a user. And what ChatGPT suggests is this code, which adds the user as an owner. So I copy this one and put it into my create script. So let's try it again. So finally, this command worked and now I have full privileges and all databases have been created. So finally, my curl command works. The application creates the object, our CRUD application is running, everything is fine, so it's time for a conclusion. Oh, that was hard. It took me almost a full day to get the application running. I would say that 90% of the code which ChatGPT wrote was actually working. But code doesn't run a business, applications run a business. And in order to get all the code into an application, I needed some manual work. This is something which ChatGPT just doesn't understand. He can generate classes, but he does, doesn't know how to put all these classes together. And the most difficult part turned out to be the database. So in order to get a database running, you need human knowledge and human interaction. But on the other hand, ChatGPT was able to write a curl command and a docker command for me. As you know, when you write these commands yourself, the syntax is very, very painful. So you need to have a look how it works and ChatGPT just generates a workable solution for you. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I leave you alone with some boring AI music. Mm -hmm.